Good afternoon. Today is August 31st, 2011. I'm Don Bittler at the Warhawk Air Museum in Napa, Idaho. I'll be interviewing Shirley Law for our Veterans History Project in partnership with the Library of Congress. The camera operator today is Don Carson. Welcome, Shirley. Hello. <laughs> Can you please state your full name, your address, your birth date, the branch of uh, military service, and the years that you served? My full name is Shirley Margaret Law. My address is 233 South Duke Avenue. My birth date is August 2nd, 1924. Branch of military service. I was in the Navy, the waves, and I served uh, from uh, uh, September of 1944 to uh, April 30th of 1946. Well, thank you, Shirley, and again, welcome. Well, Shirley, again, welcome to the Warhawk Air Museum and, and uh, allowing us to record your uh, service history for the Library of Congress. Um, you were born in Caldwell, Idaho. Yes. Back in 1924. Yes. And Caldwell was pretty small then. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. And did you live in town? Uh, no, uh, we lived in Homedale, but there was uh, women who were having babies. A lot of them went to Caldwell to have a baby. There was a, I think it was kind of a maternity hospital. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So you lived in Homedale, which isn't too far away, no, though, and, but a lot smaller. Yes. And did you go to school then in Homedale? Yes. Well, I started school in Jarbage, Nevada, and I went to school there for two years and started third grade there, and then we moved to Homedale, and I went into third grade there, and then we moved to Boise, <laughs> and I went. I was in third grade at Lowell School, and then we moved back to Homedale, and I finished up the third grade and then went to Homedale for the rest of my schooling uh -huh. through through high school. And, and what did your dad do? Well, my dad was a miner. He was a sheep herder. He was a farmer. And he worked on the Owyhee Dam. Okay. But he ended up as a farmer. And people did most anything just to be working, I guess, yes. in those days. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Living through the de Depression. Um, well, you were um, a young lady, what, about 16, 17 when Pearl Harbor broke out? 17, I was, I I was 17 in August, and, and Pearl Harbor uh, occurred on December 7, uh, 1941. I was a senior in high school. And so uh, what was your impression, or how did you hear about Pearl Harbor? Well, we heard about it on the radio, and then I went to, it was on a Sunday, then I went to school the next day, and that's when we heard uh, uh, President Roosevelt uh, talking on the radio, and we had a school assembly, and we listened to the president. So they actually played the radio of his yes. speech yes. when it was. Yes. So that stuck out in your mind pretty indelibly, I guess. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Now, did you uh, did you were you aware of the war, say, in Europe at that? Time. I mean, Europe was pretty much... Yes, it. we were aware of it, but it was a long way away, and so, you know, we didn't feel that it was, uh, really didn't have much of an impact on us uh -huh. at that time. Yeah. It was a whole ocean away, I guess. Yes. It just, uh, uh -huh. But when the Japanese attacked, uh, pretty much everybody was in shock. and Yes, and I was in school with a Japanese girl. And uh, her family, uh, the, the children would go to school, but other than that, you just wouldn't see them around. They kept to themselves. And we felt badly about that because mm -hmm. she was a good friend. That's pretty tough. Yes. Now, what, do you know if they were relocated to no, one of those camps? No, they stayed where they were. And uh, the people, uh, uh, the Japanese in, uh, in the Homedale area stayed right there. Mm -hmm. There were several families. Several families, uh -huh. okay. So uh, you graduated from high school. Where did you go to school afterwards, or what did you do when you graduated well, from high school? Well, when I graduated from high school, I came to Boise, and I got a job in the State House. Oh, wow. Yeah. I worked at the DMV. All right. <laughs> <laughs> 
probably easier because there weren't as many cars in those days. <laughs> <laughs> We also sold driver's licenses in that office. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Now, was it actually in the Capitol? It was thing? in the Capitol in the basement. Oh. But now it's not It's not there now that the Capitol's been all re redone. Uh -huh. it, it, that office is not there anymore. Did you, did you go back subsequently to visit and see where you used to work, or was it just... Well, yes, I, I did, but when I went back after the Capitol, you know, had been renovated, it was that area was gone. It was entirely yeah, different. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. Memories are gone then with, yes, the, uh -huh. with the work. Uh, did you enlist? I guess you enlisted in the Navy. They didn't draft no, women in those no. days. So. I, I, there was a young woman that I worked with, Ella McCombs, and she was from Preston. And she and I talked about going into the Navy. And so I enlisted in September, but she wasn't 20 until October. And so then she enlisted after her birthday. And then we went to uh, Hunter College the 1st of December. And that was your boot camp? Hunter yes, College. Hunter College. Okay. Um, so they didn't take women that were under 20? No, not in the Navy. I'll be darned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you didn't need your parents' permission or anything to enlist, you were basically... Well, my parents had to attest to the fact that I was 20 because uh -huh. I didn't have a birth certificate. The doctor who delivered me in Caldwell d thought birth certificates were not important. Oh. So, so I got a birth certificate later. <laughs> oh, I was going to say you could lie about your age and <laughs> get away with it. <laughs> well, that was, uh, that's kind of interesting. And, and I think people don't realize the how rural things were mm -hmm. uh, back in the, the 20s and 20s and 30s. Uh, Okay, so you went to Hunter College, yes, which was in New York, yes, in the Bronx, in the Bronx, and that was the basic that was the boot camp for the Waves for at the, the waves, time. Uh -huh. And can you tell us what Waves stood for? Waves st st stands for Women uh, Accepted in for Voluntary Emergency Service. So they didn't look at you as really Navy people. Well, I thought they did. Oh, the Navy? Okay. Yes. <laughs> but they just didn't have the name for it, like U.S. Yes, Navy. Yes, that's right. Okay. And what was your, um, you took the train, did you, to Hunter College, to New York? Yes, and it took us four days to get there. We spent a, ni a night in Omaha on a siding because there were, I don't know, troop trains or something going through. And uh, then we got to Hunter College and uh, we got on a subway and we all went I mean, we got to New York, we got on the subway, and we went to Hunter College. And I remember it was at night when we got there. Hmm. Now, it was December of 44. December 1st, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be pretty cold and it snowy. It was. It was very cold, and our Idaho clothes were not warm enough for that weather. And I was so glad when we got our Navy uniforms because they were warmer. <laughs> <laughs> and what was boot camp? Mike, for a for well, we got up at five o'clock in the morning. Actually, the buildings we were in were apartments, and uh, there were fourteen of us in this one apartment, and we all shared a bathroom. And can you imagine fourteen girls sharing the same bathroom? Hmm. But we got up at five o'clock in the morning. That was Reveille, and uh, we went to we marched everywhere. We marched to our breakfast, and then we came back. And then we marched to classes, and we marched to lunch, and we had classes in the afternoon, and then we marched to dinner. And usually after dinner, we were busy washing our clothes and washing our hair and things like that. <laughs> and studying, I guess. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, and were you issued a, a Navy blue jacket manual? or? What? I don't remember uh -huh. a manual, no. Uh -uh. And, but what kind of things did you did you pretty much learn? Um, well, in these classes, we learned a about the Navy and what was expected of us. And uh, but that I don't remember too much about the classes, uh, except that uh, it was all strange to me. But I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And the officers were pretty nice to you. Yes, or? they were. And we had an enlisted officer in our barracks, and uh, uh, Lieutenant J.G. and she, uh, and they were 
both really nice if we had problems. I remember I broke my glasses at one time and they let me go over. I think someone went with me and had to go to a doctor's office to get the lens repaired or replaced. Okay. Well, in December of 44, we the Allies had landed in, in Europe, so the war was pretty much going our way Yes. at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, some setbacks, I guess, but uh, uh, was it pretty, uh, everybody pretty much optimistic that the war was going to end soon, or? Well, I don't, we, I think we were optimistic that we were going to win, mm -hmm. but I don't remember about being optimistic about that the war was going to end soon. We uh -huh. were hoping it would. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Were there any um, particular uh, antidotes or incidences that happened at Co Hunter College that uh, you could remember or yes. share with us? I, I, uh, my, I had a lower bunk and Janet Patrick, who was quite tall, had a, the upper bunk and we'd hang our coats on the end of the bunk. Well, we had a fire drill and they said grab a coat and, and get outside and, and line up. Well, Janet grabbed my coat, and so I had to take hers. Well, she was standing outside with a coat up above her knees, and I was standing out there with one almost down to my ankles. <laughs> and the officer who came along remarked to our officer that uh, they should see about fitting us better. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, it was pretty pretty nice having that longer coat on, yes, standing it was. outside. <laughs> Um, and how long were you in the, the boot camp? We were there six weeks. Six weeks. Mm -hmm. So into uh, probably the middle of January. Then. Yes. Uh huh. So the weather wasn't getting any better. I have here a picture of your section. If I can hold it up. And we've got an arrow pointing to you. You're standing a couple of uh, uh, people down from the officer. Now, how many, was this your entire section then? Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And you probably had a number or whatever, but you, I, I would think you wouldn't remember what it is. I, I don't remember. I, I remember that our building was Building G. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, we have here a, a picture of uh, the waves that were established in 42 and this looks like it's a uh, a typical uh, regimental review yes you think? probably and, was uh, uh -huh. and it looks like uh, the various things that the waves went through typing school and uh, uh, other uh, things mechanics and so forth to free up the men i guess So, uh, you had graduated. Uh, where was your first assignment? Well, I went to uh, Cedar Falls to take yeoman training there. Uh -huh. We had to learn how to write Navy letters and and uh, uh, and it was a lot different than, than working in a civilian office. But I, I enjoyed it. And it was in the winter time and we had to march to our classes and as we would march, there was one class in the afternoon, we would march out of that class back to our, our, our dorms, and uh, uh, these children coming from school would line up and throw snowballs at us. And they would say, you got to take it, you got to take it. Well, one day, our section leader said, fall out. Well, we fell out and we pe pelted those kids with snowballs. <laughs> and they never threw snowballs at us again. <laughs> uh, they didn't learn to take it. Uh, well, let me ask, did you get any leave when you graduated from boot camp that you could get home? No, or, no, no. You just went straight to Cedar? Yeah, straight to Cedar Falls. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But it was in the right direction. Yes, it was. But but then I was sent to Bainbridge, Maryland, uh -huh. and I was only there a week. And when I got there the, and checked in with the wave officer, she said, why are they sending people here? She says, we're sending them out. So uh -huh. we got on a boat and we went to, to NOB in, in Norfolk, Virginia. Okay. And that was a, a an air base? No, that was the Naval Operating oh, Base. Oh, okay. And, and that was... Um, 
an operating base. Oh, Norfolk, yeah. Virginia. Yeah, so they North had all Virginia. the all the yeah. ships. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, there. ships would come in there, and they would invite us to come on board, and they would have dances. And the sailors were always the best dancers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and how long were you in Norfolk? Uh, well, I was only there a short time, and I was sent down to Edenton, North Carolina. And that was a small base, and they had a lot of avi uh, airmen there, mm -hmm. pilots, and they were training to go out on uh, on the uh, aircraft carriers, and I enjoyed Edenton. It was a small base, and and I was with the uh, I was in the recreation department, mm -hmm. and so I had a lot of uh, different things that I did. Well, let me go back and ask: uh, How long was your uh, school, your yeoman school, in, in Cedar Rapids? It was Rapid? only two months. Two months. Mm -hmm. And you learned to type and take. Oh, I had already. I I knew how to type and uh -huh. take dictation. That's why I was sent there. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you pretty much had a leg up on. Yes. Some of the other students. Uh -huh. huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you all. We all had to be able to type and take dictation. Take shorthand. Yeah. You know. Now you were. Uh, what rate at that time? Seaman. I I was just. Uh, I I was the lowest <laughs> one on the totem pole. Two striper then. Huh? Yeah. Seaman apprentice. I, I think maybe just one. Yeah, uh -huh. and then later I got the two, and then I got three. So okay. I was a seaman first class. I never did try to get a, a higher rate. Uh -huh. I, I was lazy. Oh, uh, you didn't want a yeoman uh, third well, class? Or? Not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> and and what, what were your duties in uh, in Norfolk other than going to dances? And oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just did uh, uh, different things. I didn't really have a, a, an assignment. I did whatever the, this officer wanted me to do, and sometimes I did what they would call, uh, uh, you would be in charge of a barracks during the daytime, and the way uh, the maids came in and cleaned the rooms and, and did things like that, and uh, uh, you took messages, and, and so it was, uh, but that wasn't permanent. I did that. Now, did you actually work in an office, though, at all? In, I did in when uh, I was on the Naval uh, naval Air uh, Station. Okay, at, but not at, not at Norfolk. Yeah, at Norfolk. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I came back from Edenton. Oh, oh yeah, okay, worked, you came back to Norfolk. And I worked in an office in Edenton also, but since it was the uh, uh, recreation department, sometimes I'd be in charge of the swimming pool or the, in the bowling alley or the theater. We, saw, we uh, had a movie theater, and we saw... Uh, sold tickets, ten cents I think, and you could bowl for ten cents a line. So it was, you know, it, mm. it was quite inexpensive. <laughs> yeah, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, do you remember what year that was or what uh, Well, I was in frame? Edenton in the summer of um, 45. 45. And then I was transferred back to the to the uh, air base in, uh, in Norfolk. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the uh, uh, then the war in uh, in Europe would have been over in '45. Yes, it was. It was over in August. Well, actually, I don't think they signed the armistice until September, but I'm not sure. But I was also I also got to go on the Missouri, and I saw the uh, metal plate or the go golden plate or uh -huh. that the where br they brass yeah brass plate yeah. where they signed the the armistice. It's uh -huh. still there, mm -hmm. but the war in Germany had ended in May, yes. so that was uh, oh yes, yeah. and I was in Norfolk too when when President Roosevelt died. Okay, and that was quite a, a shock. And I remember one of my roommates, when she heard that, she started crying and, and she ran into the room and she says, oh, we're losing the war. And we looked at her, there was another roommate and I, and we said, what do you mean? And she said, the president died, now we'll lose the war. We said, well, we've won the war, you know, because he, I mean, it was practically over by the time Roosevelt, I mean, mm -hmm. in, in, in Europe. In Europe. By the time Roosevelt died. Well, for most people, that was the only president they ever knew. I think that I think that was the way it was with her. Huh. She was also she was from Iowa. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember just being a kid in school when that uh -huh, happened, uh -huh. and and there was a a pail. Yes. Over the whole mm -hmm. school, and I mean, the nobody, teachers were all in yeah, shock. Yeah, no one knew anything about you know Truman. R right, right. And I I don't think people knew how ill Roosevelt really was. That no, he, I don't he, think he, so. You never either. hardly saw him in his wheelchair, but he no. was. And he when was. he was standing at a podium, usually he, he was braced, mm -hmm. 
and so we didn't realize that he, that, you know, his disability. And uh, so when you were in Edenton, you in, in, in the recreation yes. uh, department, that was pretty good duty, wasn't yes, it? Yes, I enjoyed that oh. because I could go different places on the base. I didn't have to stay in the office all the time. And you didn't have to stand any watches at night? or No, no, we didn't do that. Uh -huh. And we had really nice barracks. And there was one big building that was full of furniture. And my roommate was uh, from New Jersey, and she saw some of the furniture, and she said, I'm going to ask if we can have some of that furniture, because our room was, we had a large room, but we had very little furniture. And I said, oh, I don't think you can, you, we can get it. She says, well, ask and you shall receive. So she asked, and we got some, we got a chest of drawers and a table and some chairs. <laughs> Really, <laughs> we really furnished our room nicely. And, and the other waves who, who looked in our room say, well, how did you get that? Oh, you know, yeah. Pat said, we asked. <laughs> uh, they were pretty envious, I'm yes, sure. Yes, they were, yeah. Uh, and if too many people asked for it, they'd cut it off. So <laughs> not everybody would get it. Um, I think we have one of the pictures of you when you were in uh, Norfolk, is that? These are all Norfolk. Oh, yeah. okay, uh, maybe we can show some of these yeah. here. That one, yeah, and that one, and this was the old. Uh, that was the old. That that was our old barracks, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then then we went into it. Actually, we went into this one. Okay, so you were a seaman here. Yeah, and I was still a seaman there. Yeah. <laughs> and a seaman there, and it had the siding, and then you have this. Oh, you know, I think this was taken in Iowa. Oh, okay. Because that building is is better, and I think that was it. Uh, in Iowa, we were at the Iowa State Teachers College, and now okay. it's Iowa State University. Okay. Were they still the Hawkeyes at the time? I don't know. I didn't pay any attention to their team. <laughs> <I'm> just <kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, your last duty station was. In, uh, in Norfolk, Norfolk. Uh -huh, on the air base. Uh -huh. and, and, um, and how long a period of time was that, do you remember? Well, I don't remember. We went, I got there uh, probably in the, in the summer. It was before the war was over because I remember I was stationed in Norfolk when the war was over. And then I was there until I was discharged uh, on the 30th of April the next year. Okay, so you were discharged in 46. Yes, yeah. in Washington, D.C. Okay, but so that whole period of time, about a year, you spent about maybe a year in Norfolk? Yes, uh-huh. That spent most of my time there. And what were your duties at that? I worked in an office and I took dictation. I did a lot of naval correspondence and that was before we had copy machines mm -hmm. and we had to make copies of everything with, with uh, you know, this paper. Carbon paper. <laughs> Carbon paper. And I hated that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you made a mistake yes. typing. Yes. You'd have to uh, go through all the copies. Yeah, and I worked in a big office. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> we, there were civilians and naval personnel in that okay. office. But uh, our, uh, our officer was, um, I think, I can't remember what his, what his rank was. It, was. it was above a lieutenant, but I'm not sure. What, what it was, but he had been a car, car salesman in West Virginia, and he was always telling us about West Virginia. We got kind of tired of hearing about oh, it. West Virginia. <laughs> 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 well, maybe he was disappointed, and that's why he had to talk it up. <laughs> uh, what kind of work did they do? You said correspondence. And yes, it was all, it all had to do with airplanes. Uh -huh. uh, 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 repairs on airplanes and different things about airplanes because we were on this air base and our office was on the second floor of a, of a hangar. So they were working down on the ground floor on the airplanes. I remember some of the girls who worked down there and they always got to wear slacks and I felt envious of them because I had to, we had to wear skirts in our office. But the girls who worked on the, uh, uh, you know, on the hangar deck—that's what we called it. They they wore could wear slacks. Now, did they actually work on airplanes themselves? Or Some of them did, uh -huh. and they did different things down uh, in that, uh, you know, in that area. So, and they kept records, and uh, 
Oh, you know, I had a picture of that, of our mm. group too, and I don't know what happened to it. Were the buildings um, permanent buildings or were they fairly new built for the war? I mean, I'm, I'm getting uh, to what kind of conditions. Were they hot? And or Well, what? I don't remember being hot. Of course, I'm at that time, I, you know, the weather really didn't bother me too uh, much uh, at that age. Uh, but I, they probably were hot. I don't think we had air conditioning. We did have fans, but I don't think we had air conditioning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then, did the Navy ask you to stay in, or were they were they? Well, some some of the uh, uh, girls that I was in with decided they would stay in, but I decided I wanted to go home, and. Uh, uh, so that's what I did. When mm -hmm. We went the group who who wanted to get out. We went to Washington D.C. and that's where we were discharged. That's where you were okay. Uh -huh. um, so did you have a particular length of time that you had to uh, when you enlisted? It was for the uh, for the duration. Duration, yes. Plus, uh, plus, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of people were getting out at that yes. time. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And did they you, you get a seventh pay then when you yes, left? Yes, uh -huh. I did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, were you eligible for the GI Bill, or was that? Yes, I was, but uh -huh. I didn't use it. You didn't. Use I it. came back and went and got a job again. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. And In fact, I was offered a job when, when I uh, when I got home, I had a letter offering me a job uh, with a uh, with the FHA. Federal Housing Administration. Mm -hmm. No, first I worked for the Veterans Employment, and that was the U.S. Veterans Employment. But there was in in this office there was not enough work, and so then I went to work for Federal Housing. So you were still involved with uh, government uh, position. Yes. Mm -hmm. You just transferred yes. within yes. within That's the government. What I did. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, when you were separated, you. Uh, you uh, were awarded the American Campaign Ribbon, which was for service within the continental yes, United uh, States, well, uh -huh. I guess in its territories, uh -huh. and the Victory World War II yes, Ribbon. Uh -huh. So, did you get a ruptured duck, too, to wear on your... <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I, I loved going to Washington, D.C., since it was the capital, and it had always been my, my uh, goal, I guess, to go there. And so, and then seeing all the different buildings and and the uh, uh, what do I want to say uh, the the museums and things uh -huh. like that. I real and going to Arlington Cemetery and seeing the uh, changing of the guard at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And I, I've always loved the uh, anything about our government and history. So I really enjoyed that. Now, did you do? Did you take those trips from Norfolk? Or no, that's you, when I was discharged. That's your, so you ne you never got up to Washington? Not before. On your uh, no uh, on any leave or any? No, no I didn't. Uh, got to Williamsburg, Williamsburg, uh -huh, Virginia, uh -huh. and which was right next door. Yeah, in Philadelphia, uh -huh. I went there for an Army Navy football game. Oh, how? Mm -hmm. Did you go like on a bus or? A, I, you know, I just don't remember. don't remember. I know it wasn't private automobile, uh -huh. but we had we always had to take a ferry from Norfolk over to Newport News. Yes, and from yeah. there we'd take a train. I think we took the train. Uh huh. Did you go as a big group then? To no, there were just a small group. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. So you're discharged. You move back to. Move back to Boise. Boise. Mm -hmm. And you go to work for the transfer into the FHA. Yes. Uh huh. They were quite busy, I assume, yes, uh, they at were. that time. And that was an interesting job. And it was, it, uh, you, there was no down, I mean, you didn't sit around waiting for something to do. There was always work to do. Uh -huh. And it was it was interesting. Yeah. And, and what kind of things were they, processing loans? Or, yes, uh, and uh, you would see the, uh, the architectural plans for homes. Uh -huh. And uh, they had ar architects there and then the men who who uh, said how much it would they would cost? You know things like this, and and 
uh, then people from the Idaho First National, I remember there was one man who would come over to the office, and I really don't know what his job was, but he would come over once in a while about uh, uh, maybe a home loan or something else, I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but uh, he was quite familiar with the people in our office. And, and that's kind of the time when people really uh, left the rural community and moved into the cities mm -hmm. after the war. I guess they got used to mm -hmm. doing those wartime jobs and, yeah. uh -huh. and uh, it's when it really yeah. kind of opened mm -hmm. up. So quite think, a need for housing, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. And now I look at those houses and, you know, they, they really didn't amount to much. I mean, they weren't, weren't very big. And they, but, uh, of course, after the war, and a lot of people, you know, needed housing and, and veterans coming home. And so. so were they built in Boise itself? In, in Boise, mostly. Uh, uh -huh. uh, in, yeah. in what area? Can Different you do? areas. Oh, just mm -hmm. not yeah. a track of houses no, and stuff like uh -uh. that. Uh -huh. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But... Uh, probably in the range of a thousand or twelve hundred square feet I guess or yes I think so not very mm -hmm. and I remember the prices now I think about that you know you couldn't even buy a porch for, <laughs> for what those <laughs> what they bought those houses for. Yeah. do you remember some of the like what was it ten thousand thirteen percent or less or? I think I think around ten thousand twelve thousand mm -hmm. some that uh-huh and how long did you work for the FHA? Well, I worked for the FHA until, um, gee, until 1950. And then wow. I got married. Uh huh. Hmm. Now, did, where did you meet your husband? I met him on a blind date. Uh. <laughs> his, his brother was dating my girlfriend, and she wanted me to go with her, her boyfriend's brother. And I had never seen him, and uh, so I did. And uh, the first date was not very successful, but then he asked me out again, and I, I don't know why I went the second time. Second time we went dancing and had a great time, mm -hmm. so I thought he was a pretty nice guy. <laughs> did he dance better than the sailors in Noah? Yes, <laughs> much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't say any different. <laughs> okay. And how long uh, was it before you got married? Well, <laughs> I met him in October and we got married in February. <laughs> okay. That's good. It was a short courtship. Be before he could change his yeah. mind. But he asked, he asked me to go to, he, he was from Kansas, and he asked me to go to Kansas with him. And I said, I can't do that. I said, your parents, they don't know me. And, and so the first thing I knew a few days later, I got a letter in the mail from his mother inviting me to come. And mm -hmm. so then I did go to Kansas for Christmas, and that's where we got engaged. Okay, so you, uh, that was before you were married, then? Yes. You went mm -hmm. down to visit his folks? Yes, uh-huh. Uh -huh. We went there for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, where was he working? Well, he was at going to the College of Idaho on the GI Bill. Uh-huh. He'd been in the Air Force, and so he graduated in June. And then in uh, uh, that summer, he had uh, uh, he had contacted I can't remember the name of the man who had this singing group. He was in, from Pennsylvania, and uh, Floyd had an appointment with him, and because he was a singer, and he went back to Pennsylvania, and, and they said you have a beautiful voice, but there's a hundred people ahead of you, and he said, well, I have a wife, and he said I think I'd better find a job, so we we went to Chicago. And that's where we had our first child mm -hmm. in Chicago. Uh, was the group Fred Waring in yes, Pennsylvania? Yes, that was it. Thank you. I couldn't uh, remember it. Uh, Coral group. <laughs> uh, I'm really stating my age. <coughs> yes, it so, was Fred Waring. Mm -hmm. and, and so what did he do in Chicago? He worked for Montgomery Ward. He was their oh. insurance officer. Oh. And here he had a, a degree in music. And he was <laughs> he was working in for... Uh, there, they had group insurance with the Equitable Life Assurance Society, and uh, later he went to work for that uh, company. Now, did you transfer within the government at the FHA, or did no, you just quit? No, no, I, I, I quit, uh -huh. and then I had, I had the first child there in, in Chicago. Uh -huh. I never, I didn't work after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and what was the sex of your first? 
I she was a girl, and uh, I have, and then four other girls followed her. Oh wow! So I have five daughters. Five daughters, <laughs> huh? So your husband was immediately outnumbered. And he always said he had five beautiful daughters. Oh. Well, he probably did. Yeah. Yeah, that. Uh, I think they kind of can outnumber you and they can all get grouchy at the same time. Huh? <laughs> but you know, they got along better with their father than they did with me. Oh. One of the girls said to me once, Mother, you're always the one who says no. And I said, well, somebody has to. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you stay consistent. And, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, Well, that's great. And so uh, you lived in for Chicago for how long? Well, we lived in Chicago for, oh, a year and a half. And then he was transferred to Logansport, Indiana with the Montgomery Ward. And we had our second child there. And then he went to work for the Equitable the Insurance Company. And we trans he transferred to Crawfordsville, Indiana, and we had two children there. And then he was made district manager of, in the Equitable. And we were sent to Columbus, Indiana. And we had another baby there. And that made number five. <laughs> Did he get any more transfers after that? Well, <laughs> I'm just, after that. I'm just saying, I'm wondering what they're leading to. <laughs> after that, we found that our third daughter had asthma. And uh -huh. so we thought if we moved to Idaho, a dry climate, maybe her, her, you know, it would be better for her. And so we moved back to Boise in 1959. Mm -hmm. And okay. he was still with the Equitable. Uh -huh. And did he retire with Equitable? No, he died when he was 50. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. And not the result of having five girls. No, no. <laughs> okay. No. Oh, that's too bad. No, at his, uh, after he died, the girls and I were all together, and one of the girls said, well, Mom, you know I was Dad's favorite. And another girl spoke up and said, no, I was, no, I was. All five of them thought they were the favorite. Yeah. So yeah. I thought and that. And they probably were. Yes. Treated them equal. <laughs> that's good. And good memories of their father mm -hmm. then. So did you have to go to work then? Uh, yes, I did. I went to work, uh, well first I was working in, in a bookstore. It was at, at Westgate Shopping Center. It was called uh, the Idaho Book and School Supply. And two uh, uh, professors from Boise State started this bookstore and they still have it. it it's on Chinden Boulevard now mm -hmm. down in, in uh, Garden City. But I worked there and then I realized that I had to make more money. So, so I took a test with the state and uh, I passed, and since I was a veteran, they gave me five points, and so I went to work in the health department then, and I worked in immunization in the health department. And then I was working there when I met my second husband. Okay, and that was what, what, 59, 60? Oh, he, my, uh, my first husband died in 1977. Oh, 77, yes, I thought you, uh, okay. Yeah. And then I married my second husband in 78. Okay. Yeah. And did you retire from government, uh, from the Well, state? I, I quit because uh, my husband lived in, in uh, Aurora, Colorado. He worked for the United Airlines. Okay. And so <laughs> that's where we lived for 21 years. And then moved did back. Did you live in Aurora? You in lived Aurora. In, uh -huh. And then moved back to, uh, uh, to Idaho. And my daughter found us a house in Eagle that fit our, our budget. And so that's where I've been. And then my husband died six years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so he he worked for United yes. out at Stapleton, did yes. he? Yes. Uh -huh. he, he was a flight instructor. Okay. He had been a pilot in the Air Force. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he did work short, uh, uh, briefly as a pilot for United. And then he worked the rest of the, his career there as a flight instructor. And uh, as a result of his job, we took many, many trips. Mm -hmm. So I've been to lots of places. I've been to New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, China, Japan, South Africa, Brazil. Let's see, where else? I guess maybe that's about, oh, in England. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and you thought you were traveling with the Navy. <laughs> yeah. um, do you still enjoy those uh, benefits as well now? Or yes, they, I have uh, a survivor benefit uh -huh. Uh -huh. from from his uh, military service. When he died, his uh, United uh, retirement was, was gone. 
but I still have the the military. Um, no, but but do you not have as uh, you could fly with United still? If I can get on. Oh, yeah. But usually, see, the planes are smaller now going out of Boise. And the pecking order is larger. It's, it's very hard to get on. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Just recently, I went on a trip to. Uh, well, I took a three-day cruise, went up from uh, Vancouver to Skagway, and then uh, got on a bus, and uh, went, no, we got on a train, and we went up to a place in the Yukon called Car Cross. It was originally Caribou Crossing, and they shortened it to Car Cross, and then from there got on a bus and went to Whitehorse, and we were there a few days, then went up to Dawson City, and in Dawson City there's only one paved street. That's the street that you drive into the town. And the other streets are all dirt, but they and they don't have sidewalks, they have boardwalks. Mm. And it's, a, it's a neat old town. It, it hasn't changed since no, gold mining not days. Much. Except they paved the one street. Yeah. A anyway, then from there, we took uh, the highway, they call it the road to the top of the world, and we went back into Alaska, and we went to Chicken. And that little town is very small, but they do have an airport there, and they call it the Chicken Strip. <laughs> and there are three buildings there that this woman owns. She owns a gift shop and a bar and a restaurant. And she was they were selling everything in the gift shop for, very, for like half off. And um, the people on my bus were buying a lot of items. Anyway, from there we went to Toke, and we stayed all night in Toke. And uh, the manager of the Westmark ho Hotel there, he, uh, that's where we stayed. He said, uh, we're going to have a flag ceremony tonight. And he said, I want all the veterans to come. And so there were seven men and myself. And uh, since I was the only woman, they let me, uh, as I, I w went forward to where they had these boxes that they put the flags in. And as they took the Alaska flag down first and played the state anthem, and they folded it and handed it to me, and I put it in this little place. And then, then they took the Canada flag down, and they sang the Canada anthem, and gave me the flag, and then our flag, and we all sang the Star Spangled Banner, and that that was quite a moving mm. ceremony. I, I stood there with tears in my mm. eyes. <laughs> I, I imagine they were kind of surprised when you walked up as as he, a veteran. He said. We've never had a woman veteran who participated in this, you know, and uh, so anyway that. And then from Toke, we went to Fairbanks, and we we got to pan for gold, and uh, we saw how they do the placer mining. This woman ha has this this mine, and uh, everybody got some little specks of gold. One mm. man I think got sixty five dollars worth. Really? Yes, and they put it in a little vial. And then from Fairbanks, we took a train, and we went to Denali Park, and we spent a few days there. And I got to go up in a helicopter and fly up to the top of Mount McKinley. We we didn't land, but we got to, to go close, and, and the clouds had cleared away, and it was beautiful. My goodness. And then, um, oh, and then the next day we took a long bus ride through the park and saw many, many animals. And the last one we saw was a big grizzly bear, right close to the road, except he was over this bank, and he was gathering berries. He was eating berries. And that's mm. what they do, you know, before they hibernate. They, they eat up. everything inside, I guess. Uh -huh. And all these berries are ripe. And, and then from Denali, we took a uh, train, and we were up in the top of, the, you know, it, it was, what do they call it, the observation deck? Anyway, we were up there, okay. and we took that train back to uh, Anchorage. And the man, uh, uh, there was a man on the, the car, and he was telling us different things about Alaska. And he asked us to guess how many uh, lakes. We saw a lake, and he said, how many lakes do you think there are in Alaska? And I guess he said that there were over 3,000 lakes. But Alaska is a huge state, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it, yeah. Oh, I'm a, well, what do they say? Minnesota has to Oh, 1,000? Yeah, yes. Yeah, so. Oh, and I'll have to tell you, too, on the way to the airport, this bus driver said, we usually see a moose along here, and he was running along by the, by the bus along the, the, the side of the street, 
and then he went off into the trees. And evidently the moose, uh, they roam uh, free in Anchorage and they can come into your yard or wherever, you know. But evidently that one liked that area out by the airport. <laughs> and, and, and so he was kind of the tourist attraction. Yes. Uh, so they yeah. probably prod him, here comes another bus. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, so it sounded like a, an interesting trip. That was, it was. It was very interesting. Uh, and there was a lot of history. One thing that I missed, in Dawson City, there was a museum, a Jack London museum. And I've always enjoyed his books. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so sorry that I missed that. And anyway, I'll have to go back. I You'll guess. have to go back. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> now, you're a member of a women's organization with the military, is that? It's women, uh, uh, it's the women's, oh, now I can't think of it. Um, is it on your calendar? Uh, it's the Women in Mil Military Service of America. It's called yeah. WIMSA, W-I-M-S-A. Yeah, women, it's not. And this is the And, and they have the a calendar. memorial in, uh, in, in uh, Arlington Cemetery, and I'm a charter member. Now this is uh, basically women who would served in the Yes, and who force. are still in the service. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just World War II, it's no, all, no, all, all, all women. No, all women. Uh -huh. Is it a fairly large organization? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. And it, it keeps growing. And uh, when, I, when I saw the memorial, I'd seen pictures of it, but I, we, we were on the metro and then we came up onto the, onto the street and it's right there in front of you, just as you go into Arlington Cemetery. Okay, wow. Is it a fairly new memorial, or? Well, they started building it. Let's let's see. The, it was organized in 1997, but they started building the memorial after that, and I'm still making donations mm -hmm. to it. Uh -huh. So this is a fairly new organization. Then. Yes, it uh, is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. And celebrated the 10th anniversary in, in 2007. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a long time in coming and late in coming, yes. I suppose. Uh -huh. so. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, is there anything that you might like to add about your maybe your military service or what you learned from that? Or uh, Well, I learned that I was a small town girl <laughs> and <laughs> that it was a big world and a big, our, our country is a big country and that uh, I knew very little about uh, military service, but I enjoyed it. Well, is there anything else that you might want to add to the, that we've forgotten or that you can remember? <laughs> Seems or? like all I've done is talk. <laughs> That's what it's all about. <laughs> I can't think of anything right now, but when I get home, I will. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure of that. Mm. Well, we certainly want to thank you for your service to our country and for this interview. And and uh, as I say, it'll be on the Library of Congress mm -hmm. website. Thank you. I don't know when they're slow mm -hmm. in incorporating all of those, but uh, but it's a way of remembering the sacrifices that everybody mm -hmm. made, even though they weren't in the actual shooting, yes. they still mm -hmm. gave a part of their life to the mm -hmm. service of their country. So, so we thank you f for that. Well, if I had to do it over, I would do it over again, <laughs> but I would do it better. <laughs> <laughs> you might become a petty officer. <laughs>